Okay, so this is different. I'm doing a stand-up thing. This is a whole hour of my best jokes. This is from Jimmy Carr, a British comedian. I've seen some of his stuff. Very funny. Raunchy. It's very entertaining. So, I'm going to break this down into 15-minute uh, videos. And here we go. Swimming's good for you, especially if you're drowning. <laughs> Not only do you get a cardiovascular workout, you also don't die. <laughs> Two ticks. I said to my girlfriend, I said, uh, you shouldn't eat before you go swimming. She said, why? I said, you look fat. <laughs> I'm not being snobbish, but I think you know you're common if you're at the same school as your mum. <laughs> this is a bit snobbish. You get annoyed by kids that can't use cutlery properly. That irritates me, if they can't use cutlery properly. Oh. And that would add insult to injury, wouldn't it? If you got stabbed by some asbo yob <laughs> and they were holding the knife like a pen. <laughs> I'd be fucking livid. <laughs> Do it again, this time properly. <laughs> Caravan holidays. Caravan holidays are a fun way of telling your kids you're poor. <laughs> Most people laughing, a couple of you giving me the stink eye. <laughs> giving me a look as if to say, it's actually quite a posh caravan. <laughs> it's a sixth birth and we go to Cornwall, so or whatever. <laughs> Just one question for you. On your holidays, do you shit in a cupboard? <laughs> <laughs> You just about cracked a smile, but it really took some effort. <laughs> What's your name, madam? What's your name? Any... It's not the telly. I can, I can see you. <laughs> What's your name? Camilla. Camilla. And what do you do, Camilla? I suppose it depends on the guy. <laughs> oh, I'm only messing about. Just you look all dressed up for this sort of show, this kind of filth. Maybe he told you, well, we're going to go and see a theatre show in the West End of London. You went, fucking brilliant. <laughs> you probably didn't even say fucking, you probably went, marvellous. <laughs> Mar oh, the West End of London, a theatre show. This will be, oh, a bit of class. And he's finally, and then you've this, and you're going, for fuck's sake. <laughs> you bought the ticket, and how do you two know each other? That's your mum. Well, you, 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 don't, you, you don't even look like, you look as if you could be sisters. <laughs> You don't look young, she looks fucking old. You let yourself go. I can't help myself. It's some sort of trap. I love the fact you've just turned around and go, does she? <laughs> what have you done to yourself there? You've got a little thing on your... Yeah, 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 I told you. What did you do? You've got, he's got a little bandage on his face yeah. there. What, what have you done? I had a growth cut off. You had a growth cut off your face? <laughs> oh, sexy. <laughs> Wow. It'll look better after. No, I, I like the little thing. It's very, very macho. You could make up a better story than that, I feel. <laughs> There's got to be a better story than I had a growth. <laughs> I had a black eye a while back. I had a black eye because um, I was playing tennis. I got a tennis ball in the face, so I got a black eye. Obviously, that's a shit story. So what I said to people initially was, you should see the other bloke. <laughs> Fun for about half an hour. Then I hit upon this. People said, what happened to your right? I go, you should see my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you can visit her, she's in hospital. <laughs> <laughs> see, it's all class, this, Camilla. Wife beating. Oh. <laughs> Good. Well, we'll check in with you from time to time. Check you're happy. Good. Oh, oh we bought the sound. Good. You don't look young, she looks old. <laughs> it's brutal. Time check, you're happy. Good. Whenever I'm cooking, I always make sure there are vegetarian options. They can make do, or they can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Is this racist? Do Chinese people have guess who? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
I tried that joke for the first time in a tiny little 50-seater theatre above a pub, and there was a Chinese lady front and centre, and she laughed enough that she sort of bent forward, and it looked like I'd gone, no. <laughs> it's creepy. <laughs> Genuinely weird. I like, to think I'm, I like to think of myself as an equal opportunities offender. I like to think I offend everyone and therefore no one, because it's kind of a blanket bombing approach to offence. It's like I'm not picking on any group, and also I'm not really making any points, am I? I'm just trying to make you laugh for a couple of hours. That's my only job in this world. I'm not trying to make any points or change anyone's mind about anything. And the best defence of a joke is always, it's just a joke. It's only joking. Relax, we're just trying to make you giggle. <laughs> when you try and say something that's true, earnestly, from the heart, that's when it can fuck up much more spectacularly in your face. I've got a story about this. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. It's a story about PC blowing up in a friend's face. So, this mate of mine, it's quite a long story, which is unusual for me, but it's a doozy, you'll enjoy it. This mate of mine runs a comedy club, okay, at a university. He's in his mid-60s now, he's been running it since the early 80s, it's a legendary club. Anyway, runs this thing, he's quite a right-on kind of guy. If there's a petition to sign, he's signing it and forwarding the email to me. If there's a march to go on, he's on the march. Very right-on, political, involved kind of guy. Anyway, he runs this comedy club, this incident happened about 12 years ago. He decided to put on a night of American stand-up comedy. There happened to be three American stand-ups in London the same weekend. Okay? So he decided, well, instead of just booking one of them, I'll book all three of them. We'll make it like a themed evening, like the 4th of July. We'll get hot dogs and Budweiser and what have you. It'll be fun. So everyone comes to the evening. There's like 300 people in the club, and he's all excited about it. The first act goes up on stage. He's a black American stand-up out of New York City, and he does what I would refer to as an Uncle Tom routine. Uh, if you're not familiar with the terminology, that means he did a racist routine. All his jokes were based on negative, racist stereotypes. He got away with it. He was a very charismatic performer. He was very handsome, but the material was... It was terrible. I mean, it was like, at best, it was uh, white guys drive like this and black guys drive like this. Nonsense, ill-observed nonsense. At worst, it was stuff that would make your skin crawl, okay? He totally got away with it that night. He got a big round of applause at the end of about half an hour set, and he walked back to the green room at the club, and my mate went in after him, and he went up to him, and he said, I want a word. You'll get paid for tonight's gig, there's no problem with that, but you would not be welcome back at my club telling those kind of jokes. I think it's racist, I think it's wrong. I don't think it's okay for you to tell racist jokes just because you're a black guy. I think, if anything, you should know better. I think it denigrates the struggle of the African-American people, and you can never say that no one's told you so, because I'm telling you so right now, it's racist and it's wrong. Wow. And the comedian went, I agree. When you're right, you're right. But I'm the other black comic. I haven't been on yet. <laughs> <laughs> if you eat a lot of spicy food, you can damage your sense of taste. When I was in India last year, I was oh, listening to a lot of no. Michael Bolton. <laughs> oh, no. I'd like to end this evening by talking about heckling. I like a bit of heckling. It's great fun when people have come to see your show and they feel they can join it. It's like everyone's friends. It's great. But when you start out in this business, oh, my God, it can be cruel. I've got a friend that was doing a support act. And obviously, if you're doing a support act, people haven't paid to see you, they're paid to see someone else, and you're sort of getting in their way. <laughs> this friend of mine, he's a very funny boy, he was supporting a very famous comedian in Oxford, and someone from the back of the room, as he was halfway through his act, and he was struggling, fair enough, but he didn't need this. Halfway through his act, someone shouted, you're ruining our evening. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Fucking hell. I mean, it happens to me all the time. It happened a couple of weeks ago. A guy sitting where you're sitting there, sir, front and centre. His phone went off. Now, everyone's got a mobile phone. Someone's going to leave it on by mistake. It's not the end of the world. Just switch it off. Not a problem. He took the call. <laughs> <laughs> so there's me and 2,000 people going, what the fuck is this guy on? <laughs> he totally confidently, he went, I'm at a comedy show. <laughs> and then there was a pause and he went, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you with this. It has been a pleasure talking to you, ladies and gentlemen. I'll leave you with this. This is the harshest heckle I've ever had to deal with. I was doing a gig in uh, Edinburgh at Late and Live. It doesn't start till one o'clock in the morning, so they're all out of their minds on heroin and shortbread. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so it's a late-night gig. Everyone's drunk and high and out of their minds. And, and it's all going quite well. I'm about ten minutes into the gig. And, you know, doing my usual thing. It's about eight years ago. I was pretty new to this game. And this guy from the side shouts very clearly, loudly, confidently, just as I'm halfway through a joke, my mum died of cancer. <laughs> I thought, shit, the bed, what the fuck? <laughs> I thought, well, I'll deal with this logically and in order. I, I, I said, well, firstly, I wasn't talking about mums, and secondly, I wasn't talking about cancer. <laughs> and he came back with the epically harsh, 
No, but it was funnier than this. <laughs> <laughs> and this amazing cab driver. He was driving a black cab. He was whistling, yeah, smiling, clearly having a brilliant time. He said, I love my job. I'm my own boss. Nobody tells me what to do. I said, left here. <laughs> <laughs> I got into an argument with my girlfriend. She said, you treat this house like a hotel. I said, I have never snorted cocaine off a hooker's tits in this house. <laughs> Told my girlfriend the top she was wearing was too revealing. I said Jimmy sometimes cries after sex. <laughs> we uh, we got into a row. Uh, you'll be familiar with this if you're in a long-term relationship. This is the kind of scenario for a row that I think happens a lot. We got into a fight on the way back from a party. So we went to this amazing party. It's about 2:30 in the morning. We're driving home. So I'm driving. I haven't had anything to drink. Stone cold sober. Driving. She's had quite a lot to drink. I mean, in terms of units of alcohol, she's had an awful lot to drink but she's not drunk. And I know she's not drunk. I know she isn't drunk because she told me she wasn't drunk 400 fucking times. <laughs> you know, like sober people don't. <laughs> anyway, the worst thing about this argument, I didn't even say anything. Someone else said something and she was talking about that and I just agreed with the fact that the other person said. And it was a fact, it wasn't a point for debate, it was a fact. So I was driving along, right? She's, she's talking a lot, I'm listening a little. <laughs> okay, my bad but she's telling me about the evening in real time. <laughs> and I was there for most of it, so I don't need to be hearing this. <laughs> a lot of the stories involve me. <laughs> right, so we're driving along, she tells me this story, and she, she got to the point, she said, this, this mutual friend of ours, this girl that we both know, she said, that girl, that girl said my dress was short. I went, yeah, it is. <gasps> You're taking her side? Why don't you go back to the party? Why don't you drive her home? It was short. I mean, it was a really short. It was what I would call a greyhound. <laughs> you call it a greyhound? It was just an inch away from the hair. <laughs> it was a really short skirt. So, like, I, I went, it is short, yeah. She went, oh, you're taking her side. When you go back to the party and drive her home, then, if you fancy her so much, try to undermine me, you're saying I've got fat legs. <laughs> Suddenly, fucking Chewbacca's in the car. Never fucking fancy me anymore. You don't think I can? What the fuck? There's just snot and. <laughs> Next thing I know, like within 20 seconds, she's pulling on the car door. We're doing 40 miles an hour, middle of nowhere, 2:30 in the morning. She's going, I'll walk home. I'll walk home. Trying to open the car door. She's open. <laughs> she's not wearing a seatbelt because she's pissed. Opening the car door safer. Um, <laughs> opening the car door. I had to stop the car. Because it's dangerous, right? So as soon as I stop the car, she fucks off out immediately, teetering on heels up the road. No coat, no money, no keys, no idea where she's fucking going. <laughs> I'll walk home. I'll walk home. You don't even fucking care. I'll fucking walk home. I'll walk home. I'll walk home. <laughs> so I have to do the dutiful boyfriend thing of driving along at four fucking miles an hour. <laughs> Come on, get back in the car. It's all my fault. <laughs> it's not my fault, I've done fuck all here. <laughs> Come on, get back in the car, I'll buy you chips. <laughs> just please, just get back in the car. Anyway, long story short, I got arrested for curb crawling. Curb <laughs> crawling? I don't know about you, but I think the best thing about a big, passionate argument is tumbling into bed together afterwards and lying in cold, grim silence until dawn. <laughs> Are you asleep? I can't sleep. I'm too full of hate. <laughs> Do you get this? Do you get the super patronising warning from the waiter about the hot plate? Do you get that when you go out for a meal? Yeah. The, the, it arrives and the waiter goes, be careful, the plates are very hot. <laughs> You think, yeah, I'm a grown-up. I think I can operate a plate. <laughs> also, I can't help but notice, Mr. Patronising Waiter, you just put it down with your hand. <laughs> but it's too hot for my little fingers. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Mr. Patronising Waiter, should we see if it's hot? Shall we? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's really hot. <laughs> I don't want to be a dick, but you should have said. <laughs> <laughs> my own mum thought I was gay. When I was 19, my mum was convinced I was gay. It's very difficult to convince your mum you're not gay. So we got a camcorder, I was fucked. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but I'm what's referred to as a gay-friendly act, you know? I'm a gay-friendly act. I was asked last November to judge Mr. Gay UK. I said it would be my pleasure. He's against nature and against God, and he's going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's okay to tell that joke because it's almost impossible to offend a homosexual man. You know, because let's face it, if they're doing that for fun. <laughs> if your idea of a good time is a cock in your ass, what do you care? <laughs> <laughs> We've all thought about gay sex, though, haven't we? You've, you've thought about gay sex, haven't you, sir? <laughs> no. You haven't thought about gay sex. You just leapt in there and fucked him. <laughs> well, I admire your honesty, sir, and your bravery. I thought about gay sex. I thought, oh, my cock would get covered in poo. <laughs> <laughs> You're sniggering. What's your name, blonde lady? Who... Move along? <laughs> what are you saying, Vicky? Dance for me, monkey boy. <laughs> Is he your fella? <laughs> well, well, what do you mean? He's either your fella or he isn't. Is he? Is he your fella? Yeah. Sorry, she's saying yes. <laughs> And you're saying no, and you're just look, you've gone really red and you look really embarrassed. <laughs> They're fuck buddies. <laughs> oh! I see what, how very modern. <laughs> how very 2005. So you're not going out with each other, but you are fuck buddies. <laughs> that is fantastic. Can we just all take a moment to, you know, congratulate that man there? <laughs> He's, a lot of work has gone into that. A lot of work has gone into that. He's had to buy a Cosmopolitan for a couple of years. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> and they'll know that you're a dirty little hussy. <laughs> oh, no! The great thing about that is that he's convinced you that, yeah, we don't need a relationship. It's so... <laughs> it's so old-fashioned. I should be able to sleep with whoever I want to sleep with. And so should you, as long as it's just me. <laughs> when I say... <laughs> yeah, there'll be a lot of jokes. <laughs> it's not every day I get to talk to a slag. Come on. <laughs> Now, I don't know where the mark is until I overstep it. That's my... <laughs> you just did. <laughs> that is juvenile. That, sorry, for those of you that didn't see that, it's it'll be on the DVD. <laughs> available at all good car boots. <laughs> Vicky's response to that, yeah, she's been called a slag at a show. That's not good in anyone's book, and I apologise for that unreservedly. But did you really need to do that? <laughs> God bless you. I do a lot... All right, I know I ran over the 15, but I didn't want to cut off that segment. Hey, you're not getting up here. I'm ending the video. It's too late. No. All right, fine, you can do the outro with me. Do you, know, do you remember what the outro is? You gotta say like and subscribe. Yeah, that's close enough. Say like and subscribe. All right, well, so like and subscribe and um, I'll come back with part two, three and four. That's all you got? Okay. Until I do the next video, have a good day, have a good night.